Welcome back to our ticketing system course. In our last video, we discussed Cloud Spiceworks help us ticketing system. If you're new to this course, make sure to go back to the lecture one, lecture two to understand what ticketing system is, why we use it, and then do these uh, two videos. Uh, watch the demos, there are practical videos, and then you'll learn a lot more how in real world we use ticketing system as an IT professionals. Now, the last one that I want to add into this whole demo is the manage engine. Now, this would be enough for you to add ServiceNow and Spiceworks and Manage Engine. So if somebody uh, asks you about ticketing system, you can at least talk about the first two. And the last one is Manage Engine because it's also a very well-known company, just like Solaris Wind also have a web help desk. So uh, again, we are not getting paid by these companies. It's just that Solaris Winds, Manage Engine, Netflix, these are, the, these are the type of products that you will be working in a in a corporate level of IT professionals because that's what we work on. This, these are the companies that we have to buy products from and we have to make our life easy. That's the reality. We don't always work on scripting. We don't always make our own products. We can't. Some of the IT professionals even can't. I mean, we're not programmers. So we have to go for these type of companies to make our life easy. And they're very well known. And when you talk about these names in the interview, uh, put it on your resume, then that's where people say, okay, this person knows a little bit more than just two radical A plus type of uh, paper certification. Nothing bad about it, but it just makes it more, uh, you know, um, more sellable when you have the products like these on your resume. So now, how do you do this demo on Manage Engine? Simply, you need to click on, uh, go to Google and just type Manage Engine demo. And this is the demo link. So uh, I would prefer actually this one, demo.serviceplus.com. So when you click on it, the way I like to practice on this is that, and I use this in my live training as well, because it has a very easy way to distinguish between these two uh, areas. So one is a login as a user, end user. So at this point, you know, by going through this whole course, you know who the end user is. So simply, you will just click on the login as a end user, just to have a feeling that how a user will see a portal in Manage Engine. And again, just like I did it so many times, and this exactly looked like a service desk, um, I feel like probably they have copied almost the same portal. But anyways, maybe no, no I'm not. I'm, I'm, I, I, let me take that word again. Uh, this is the, this is a total different company, and they're using Service Desk Plus, and uh, I don't want to get in trouble. So this is definitely uh, different than uh, what we were using in Service Desk. But you can see they have a little different thing going on. Um, you can search things over here. I'm facing an issue. I need a service. So just like this, you can start to act like a user. So this is exactly where the things will start. So if you are having an issue, you're just going to click on report an issue. And then you can see right here, they have already created some kind of templates in there. So you see right search template. And if there was an issue with the email, you will just click on email. If it was an issue with the software, you'll just click on the software. Let's see what we have in other and it says default request. So that's also kind of like a template. So then you will just need to type your issue in there. So let's say, for example, we're having an issue with a software, um, software error. All right. And you can just put sample. And again, just like any other ticketing system, it got to have categories. And who make these categories again? These are your IT professionals who already worked in your company for a long, long time, and they already know these categories. So we have a software issue. We're just going to use this journal, and then you see how you have subcategories. We don't have any subcategories here. And on the bottom, uh, you can select many more tabs if they have it. Uh, some of the internal companies don't put countries. They know you're working in a, you know, in a same building. They know it's U.S. or some other country. You're, you're working in that same building, so they're not going to have this type of, uh, you know, um, additional fields. So we clicked on add request and just like any other ticketing system, what, what do we have here? We have a ticketing number, right? We have an assignment, we, who got it assigned, who created this, de uh, department name, phone number, uh, all of that stuff is available right here. And this is a request right now. It has a number in there. So if I go back now to, let's say, uh, to the home page, what do I see here? So if I look in here, 
I can go back and see the pending is five. It was four before. One approval and one update. Okay. So now let's go back to request and see if we can find our request in more of a list format. So there you go. You have a list format available and it's open. So at this point, this ticket is being submitted by a user. So if you want to practice this, you have to log out of this and then go back to the home page and then log in as who? You're going to log in as a technician. So here you go. You have a technician. And this is why I like this because then you can do back and forth and, and, and do it freely because it's freely available online. I'm just going to do login as technician. Now you, you'll see your whole layout will change to more advanced stuff right there. So you see I, how you have help desk in here. You have travel, housekeeping. There's so many different things um, here. And if you click on this uh, little ESM directory, you see it takes you to even more uh, like the, the admin area of this uh, whole system. Like you have users and Active Directory integration, proxy settings and rules and so many different things. A single sign-on in there. Uh, but let's get away from this because that's more like a, uh, an application analyst or a systems administrator will be doing this. So if I clicked on Help Desk, by going back, actually, it's just choosing the Help Desk. But I can, I can choose another, uh, you know, section from here. But we're just into the Help Desk area right now. So there you go. This is the listing of how Service Desk Plus in Managing looks like. If I click on the dashboard again, you see how their dashboard has a lot of different type of, uh, you know, um, charts and everything. So you can come over here. You can click on the Help Desk and see which requests are due, who's assigned to who, open. To be honest, like in a in a look wise, this is not that. Uh, you know, if you look at it, it's it's not as uh, pretty as other ticketing systems like Spiceworks. I like their chart and everything. But if you look at the functionalities, it has a lot more functionalities. And it's kind of like if you compare this with the service desk, because that service desk is pretty huge. But it's kind of like in that area. It's like more of like an enterprise corporate level type of ticketing system where you can have a lot more features. And it has project solutions, assets, CMDB, purchases, contracts, admin. There's 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 a lot of things going on in, in this ticketing system as well. But again, as a level one who is going to just start an IT job, you're not focusing on these features right here, project features and asset features. That's not your, your job right now. Your job is to understand that these are the type of systems you're going to work on and you just need to know what are tickets and where to get to the tickets and how to open the tickets and then how to assign the tickets to the proper team is going to be your main job. So if I click on the request right now, your main job is going to be to open this ticket and actually know who to assign it to and who to, uh, and understand the priority level. So my recommendation to you is going to be to look on Google and try to find out more about how people prioritize tickets. Because every company, every, uh, uh, you know, different type of organization will have a different type of priority levels, but there are generic levels that we already know. So like a normal is something that's not, it's not broken. It's not something like it's, it's not stopping a business. Uh, a medium would be something like kind of like, uh, you know, impacting one or two users. More than that will be either urgent or, you know, something that you need to really just go in there and just kind of like, you know, work on it because a whole floor is down right now, a switch is down. So there's a lot of different type of priority levels, priority as in they were, they're going to either call it low, medium, high, or they're going to call it urgent. And there's so many different things that, that people can, can uh, design their ticketing priority. So I will re recommend highly that you should Google and find more documentation on this subject because that's a little, you know, um, um, kind of like it depends on where other people, what other people are using. So you may find some forum, some Spicewurst documentation or some Spicewurst community that, that people are using this stuff. So here you're just going to, for your practice, you're just going to open this up. And then after that, you just need to go in to this ticketing system and just kind of like analyze of what's going on over here. So they may have a little bit more, uh, you know, text to kind of like distract to you. But here your ticket is right here, you know. This is 158 by guest. Here's the assignment. So that makes it a little easy for you to see what's going on. And then, of course, you can have a more attachment stuff right now. And you can have a conversation uh, and you can see conversation by email, system notification. 
you can add notes to this ticket and if you go down this is where everything is going on uh, in terms of uh, what kind of other details that this company would want to use this for now do do remember that if you see something like this and you're like oh, how i don't know all these stuff like i'm not gonna know all these things this is just too much so remember that they, they are just putting a product with all the features on right now uh, usually a lot of the administrators will remove the things that they don't need in the company they will make it very simple because if they're they don't need to know let's say this information on the left side they're just going to remove that they're not going to use this as a to distract people or to leave it empty like this so this is where I say that ticketing systems are well designed and that's where people have to work on. But for you, you need to come and check the ticket number, how do you search a ticket, and the most important thing is how do you assign a ticket. So you can see it's a pickup. Pickup means like I'm going to pick up this call, right? You can go to the, uh, uh, the, you see how it's updated right now. I can go to the action and what do I do what, with this ticket now? I want to add a task to it. I want to add a note to it. I want to add attachment to it. I can add a work log to it because some ticketing, some ticketing may, some tickets may need that time, you know, because you have to like wait for a memory or you have to wait for a motherboard or you have to wait for a Dell technician to come and fix it for you. So then of course you have to do that. Then of course you submit it for approval if it has to be done by another managers or systems administrator needs to do something and they need to be, they have to have approval system then they have to approve it like for example sometimes you have a new technician need to access a server so a technician submit a ticket to you you send it to the person who needs to approve it and then comes back to you and then you probably will give the permission so that's the wait and delay in that in this area and then you have to kind of like know that that's you can just close it now sometimes we work on duplicate requests too because some people may call you and another technician may pick up the call and yeah it can happen you know maybe they're somewhere else you picked up the call they picked up the call they worked a little bit over here and there and then they also submit a ticket at the same time you also to submit it at the same time then you probably will close one of the ticket that is more considered to be a duplicate you're just going to close that ticket because it's going to create more confusion you can do the other stuff like you know you can um search problems associate change associate a project so if it was a part of a project because sometimes you have a major project going on in it and let's say for example we have to build a new website but that website is having an issue so that website having an issue could be a ticket related to that project so you need to actually assign it to that project so then people later on can come and check the project and see how many issues were already we were facing in that project so they can see these tickets and somebody let's say somebody left the company it's very important because if somebody leaves the company and they've been into this new project and you spend like six months in there so this person has a lot of data this person had a lot went through in this project they know a lot about this project so a lot of time they will associate that project with the ticket so then if this person leaves the company then a new person comes in they already know a lot about this project through the tickets so that's why it's very important and why a lot of people are using it so here you go you got this whole listing right here of course you can do a custom action in here and you can do a reply right here and there's a lot of different things going on so this is my recommendation to you is to come over here and play around with this service desk uh, ticket send some tickets close some tickets play around with it just to get familiar with it and then just you know put it on your resume that you played around with this right now, other ticketing systems that are known in the market, and this is the last video, we're not going to make more t ticketing system videos. This is Remedy. Remedy demo is basically, you can go and here's the thing. If you find a ticketing system like this, you can always do a YouTube search. I already uh, explained that every company, every product, they will put a better video than I am making. Why? Because they want to sell that product. So they're going to go into extreme detail. But for you, you can learn it. You don't need to too much stress about some of the, the advanced stuff that they're teaching you always remember you're applying for a job and you're making your job easy when you land a job after that a company will teach you company will tell you how their process works so don't worry too much about this area just know that there's a ticketing system how do you uh, work out a ticket and that's it the, the next information if you want to 
if you want to still if you're not satisfied with these videos then i recommend you go to the product demos like bmc Rem remedy and then here you go you got you got a bunch of videos that people have created for bmc remedy ticketing system if you feel like you you are a solaris wind person and you have you have uh, if this company is using a lot of solaris, solaris wind type of system so do know that maybe they're using a web help that's from solaris wind so just go and find out about solaris wind on their website on youtube and you're going to find tons of videos about solaris wind similarly uh, you know manage engine similarly about the spikes were similarly about the service desk all these ticketing systems have people that have created ticketing uh ticketing uh, videos for because they they want to sell this they want they want people to use this so this will be my last advice for you if you still have any questions and if you like this video please Make sure you let us know and uh, make sure you complete this course. And if you are a member, you can submit a project and get a certificate. It, it's uh, just a cooler thing to put it on your uh, resume. And that's a uniqueness we talk about. That's why you impress people. That's how you uh, kind of like cancel out the experience requirement for an extremely new person. I know a lot of time people would want put one year of experience and two years of experience. But the reason they put that because they expect that maybe you worked somewhere right they think that you know about ticketing system so uh, for, for a person who's brand new who's a young student they never know about these ticketing system they don't know have they don't have any knowledge so they basically get very discouraged when they go to these job interviews with such experience at the same time they cannot even answer about ticketing system so now you have the ability to tackle that experience question by just doing the one thing of course you have not finished all whole training yet you have not taken many other courses that we're teaching so it's a combination of everything that's going to make basically uh what happens is gonna, it's going to be like this so in my live training today we were teaching all of this stuff so in this ticketing system you have just covered the ticketing system only but what about these other things of vmware active directory group policy all this stuff now i'm not saying you should know all of these things to land a job you will land a job regardless maybe you don't have any none of this none of ticketing system too someone will hire you we have lucky people like that in IT. We are we already proven that to many many people. They will hire you. But what about that first call? What about that quality of life? What about your stress level? What about you make you becoming a a proper IT professional? What about you want to grow? You want to advance in your career? Then you need mentorship. Then you need a program like ours. Then you need YouTube channels. You need people. You need people to follow. That's the reality of IT. And if you believe in it, you're going to be good. If you don't believe it in it, you still can do it yourself. I'm sure you can do it. It's just hard. And um, the more chances are you're going to give up. But again, everybody's different. Thank you so much and have a great day.